test is scheduled for one fall. Making their way to the ring. Live from the AfterBuzz TV studios, it's Making Their Way to the Ring with Lillian Garcia. Welcome to Making Their Way to the Ring, another amazing addition because I have another amazing superstar. This is an incredible show because, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, first of all, let me tell you, you can find me at, at LillianGarcia.com on Twitter and Instagram. Facebook is Lillian Garcia official fan page. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and get all of that over with because that way I can tell you who is my guest today. Uh, yes, you can find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash AfterBuzzTV and also iTunes. Make sure, please, you subscribe. It really does help the show. Make sure that you you know, put comments down there, and that way we can read them. We can improve the show. If you have any uh, tips for us, uh, tell us what you do like as well of what's been going on with all the guests that I've had that have just been so amazing. And without further ado, yes, we have Brian Kendrick. As a matter of fact, it's the Brian Kendrick that is going to be in studio with me. So excited to catch up with him. I've known Brian since he came into the WWE. I started in 99. He came in... Uh, um, a, a few years later, but I, I've just had an amazing uh, relationship with him through the years and have seen his career go up and down, and I'm sure that he's got quite a story. He is definitely on the up, and uh, I can't wait to talk to him. I can't wait to share everything with you guys uh, about his life. So let's go ahead. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and show you a little bit of Brian Kendrick's career, and then, like I said, he'll be in studio with us and making their way to the ring. Brian Kendrick is a professional wrestler and renowned in-ring trainer who you better call THE Brian Kendrick. Growing up, he loved professional wrestling and eventually saved up enough money from his dishwashing job to start training. Brian moved from Washington to Texas in the summer of 1999 to attend the wrestling academy of one of his childhood favorites, Shawn Michaels. Brian quickly began wrestling around the world from Mexico to Japan and had a short stint with WWE in 2003. He was catapulted to superstar status in 2006 when he and Paul London became the WWE Tag Team Champions. Their 331 day reign would remain the record for nearly a decade. Brian would go on to have a successful run in TNA and New Japan Pro Wrestling. He returned to WWE in 2014, performing on their developmental show, NXT, and working as a trainer. He would become the face of the reintroduced Cruiserweight Classic and won the WWE Cruiserweight Championship in late 2016. Brian lives in Los Angeles with his wife and former pro wrestler Taylor Kendrick. It's about to get real, raw, and inspiring with the Brian Kendrick. There you have it in the studio with me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so excited because I have none other than the Brian Kendrick. That's right. Uh, thanks for having me. To me, you're yeah. spanky. Yay, yay. <laughs> I for like years, yeah. for years and years and years, I oh, I gotta smart. know, right? Yeah. I, I gotta know you. I found, I mean, I just called you Spanky because yeah. everybody called you Spanky. But yeah. I found out that you were Spanky because you could actually drive um, from town to town uh, late at night. I mean, that's what that's what the <laughs> sources say. But I'm like, <laughs> there's, a, there's a few missing details. But yes, seriously. Well, I guess because the the runs are so long, uh, 200 miles, 300 miles. Yeah, or you know. Cincinnati to Los Angeles and you got to be there in 33 hours to go wrestle three matches in a row oh my gosh yeah so um, that's that's what I did so I can make it to Japan and eventually get signed to that WWE. is that is more intense than becoming a dishwasher uh, to, to get money yeah, yeah that's yeah, way more yeah, intense yeah. than that yeah 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 I really I mean, like wrestling yeah, yeah I was gonna say I, you, you you were actually born in Virginia yes right yeah. and then you moved to Washington when oh um so we moved from Virginia when I was um seven to Canada and then uh while in Canada my parents had a really um crazy divorce and then after that we moved in with my uh, grandfather my mother's father when i was about eight years old oh wow and that uh, it wasn't and that was in washington 
You live yeah, in Elmer, yeah, Washington. Yeah, 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 in Olympia, Washington. That's correct. Yeah. So, and where in Canada did you go? Mississauga, right outside Toronto. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 How was that for you when uh, going through that divorce as a kid? Do you remember that? Or? Oh yeah, vividly. Um, yeah. So the way it happened was it was it was my birthday, and uh, so we had all the friends meet up. We were going to go do laser tag. And the cops showed up at my house, and my father called in a bomb threat at, uh, from my birthday party. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we had to flee the country. Oh, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. What does that lead? Like, I guess you don't have a relationship with your, with no, your dad, right? No, haven't, no, haven't seen him since. Um, yeah. What does that do to you? I, I, it made me a really angry kid. Um, yeah. You know, I... I uh, yeah, I was I was uh, in trouble constantly. Got thrown out of daycares. Um, you know, I bit a principal. I yeah, I was in tr I was in trouble throughout elementary school, um, middle school, all of it. I was I was a really bad kid, um, little fire starter, all that stuff. But I can understand that because inside you were screaming. Yeah, and I, I you know yeah. I didn't I didn't I just knew I was angry. I didn't know right. why. Um, but I had a great, you know, my mother was great, my, my grandfather was great, my aunt, my mother's sister, she lived with us for a stretch, and so there, I was surrounded by great people, great sister, great brother, uh, both younger, but uh, I was just angry for some reason, so yeah. it took me about, I don't know, well, I'm, I'm 37 now, and it's mostly out of my system, the, the anger, I'd say. Um, Getting fired really helped. Uh, in two thousand nine. Yeah, that really yeah. humbled me and and put things in perspective and uh, and just um, forgiving my father, who I didn't talk to, but just out there into the right. atmosphere, like hey, it, it is what it is. So um, so no sweat. How, if I saw him, I'd hug him. How would thing. you? How, like, how did you get to that point? Did you seek out counseling, or did you a any? Ooh. Thing that that helped you get there in case somebody else is actually going through this um so i had to go to counseling when i was a kid and even when i got signed to a developmental deal um bruce pritchard uh gave me an ultimatum we can either release you or we can send you to anger management and i said i'll go to anger management um but it was i you know i i i guess I enjoy trying to figure out life like it's a puzzle and, and myself and through examining that, what purpose does this serve? Me being angry and I realized it was it was a part of my identity I was trying to hold on to, um, trying to, to, you know, not take crap from anybody and then I was just seeing crap where crap wasn't there and I had to realize like this isn't, this isn't good for anybody, it doesn't help with relationships, whether it's with my wife, with my family, or, or friends. And those are the people I care about. Mm -hmm. And then people, not that I didn't care about people in general, but people I didn't know, it, why would they like me? Because I was just a prick all the time. So, um, and even for my own peace of mind, uh, it just feels a lot lighter. You know, yeah, I was gonna better. say, yeah. I bet it's so heavy going through that every single day. Being angry, was. being angry, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, and, and um, I can't use an incident in my life as an excuse because who hasn't been through something, you know? Right. And 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 you know, cry me a river. You, who cares? So your parents get divorced. Um, I didn't get blown up. Nothing that bad happened. And there's there's horrible stuff happening all the time every day. Um, so it was time to grow up. Yeah. Have you been able to, and I'm going to get into your whole, you know, your training mm -hmm. and everything, because I think that that's been a big part of who you are as mm -hmm. well. Um, and, and But in your training or along your path, have mm -hmm. you been able to help others in any, like, do you see signs in people that are going through something, maybe not even similar, but mm -hmm. just they're angry with their situation mm -hmm. that's happened to them in life? Have you been able to be a source of, of <laughs> counselor, you know what I mean, like help? I mean, I guess I, I, I wish I could say I have, but no, um, I don't. I couldn't pinpoint any names of anybody who I've truly helped. Um, I'd be willing to, but. Um, and I'm not even asking you for names. I'm just saying that. Well, even anybody, if I were to keep them myself, I can't think of anybody. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, I guess one thing. One thing. I don't know if I realize, but I, I tend to believe that. Um, 
you can you can give people advice from your own experiences and uh, from your successes or, or more importantly the, the way you know the ways you failed and you can tell them please you know trust me from a guy who's suffered because of these mistakes don't make these mistakes you have to go through it yourself to yeah. really sometimes you do yeah yeah, yeah. isn't it so sad sometimes it's crazy. You, you look at somebody and you're yeah. like oh don't i see you going down the wrong path yes. you want to just go like oh yeah. but then if you, they don't sometimes like, seriously they have to go through it have to yeah that's part of experiencing life yeah and because you actually went through mm -hmm. it you know a lot of times um you know, I've gone through stuff myself. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I was bullied a lot mm. as far as I mean, I, I moved from Spain and all of a sudden I'm in school in South Carolina with mm. a Spanish girl showing up with dresses who speaks another language. <laughs> I mean, it was rough, right? Um, but I remember I look back now and I go, I'm actually glad I went through a lot yeah. of those things. It actually helped me yeah. be who I am today. Yeah. Do you see that? Like, or, or would you rewrite what, what you, no, what you read through? Absolutely. No, absolutely. Um, it, uh, I guess it, it, it sharpens you, it toughens you, all that stuff, but it, it rounds you out, however you want to say it, but it makes you who you are. Um, so I think it's just part of the process of living, whatever the purpose to life is, you know. I think, I think a big part of it is experiencing life. So, yeah, you have to go through stuff to really taste it all. Yeah, yeah. and now everything is, I can imagine you coming back, and mm. I want to talk about that. Uh, uh, but before we we do the, hit that, because I I know that sometimes I want to fast forward into some mm. things, but I I want to not go so fast because I think that it's important of how you grew up as to who you are. Mm. Like we were saying, um, what was the love for wrestling? What how did that come about? Um, so it all started going over to a friend's house to go play a board game. I was bringing a board game. They were watching WrestleMania Six. Just came out on VHS. On Washington, in Washington, when you were living there. In Washington, there? yeah. Yep. Okay. And uh, so they say, "Hold on, let's." They're, they're going to watch this main event first. It just came on, Ultimate Warrior versus Hulk Hogan. And I said, "I, I want to be that guy, Ultimate Warrior." And uh, so then I went to Video Land every weekend. Just kept renting the same tapes, the the dozen that they had, and watched them over and over again. And it became my best friend, just watching tapes over and over and over again. And I, you know, I. I Ultimate War made me fall in love with wrestling, and then Coco Beware was quickly became my favorite wrestler, and that's who I want to be. I want to be Coco Beware, yeah. and um, yeah, I just I I wanted to do it forever, and I didn't think it was I didn't know how you would do it, and then my my buddy he had a friend who worked with him at a gas station. This is when we were in high school, and this guy applied to a wrestling school didn't know there was such a thing oh, wow. so then I started applying to wrestling schools and then, yeah. and then here I am wow yeah. that's incredible so when you were um watching that I mean did you actually get to meet Ultimate Warrior I never got to meet you never got yeah. to meet all. I got to meet Coco Beware and he oh, sang okay. Pile Driver for me oh wow yeah what? yeah 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 back when I was in developmental yeah. it was a dream come true but Never got to meet the Ultimate Warrior, oh. uh, but I got one of his satin jackets. Oh, that's so cool. Home. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's better than nothing. Yeah, but in 1999, you decided to move to Texas mm -hmm. to go to Shawn Michaels' school. Yeah. Why Shawn Michaels? So I actually went to a school a year before that in 1998, also in Texas, uh, NWA Southwest, and, and it's a fine school like any other school around the country, but. Um, I didn't think I was going to progress the way I wanted to, so I was going to hunt down Jose Lothario, who was Shawn Michaels' trainer. They made videos of him, you know, when Shawn was training for WrestleMania, whatever it was. I forget the Iron Man one, though. And uh, I was just a stupid kid, and I figured I can go find Jose Lothario. And as I was saving up money, um, Shawn Michaels opened up a school. Mm. Um, well, that's that's what I want to do, so I did it. and. My aunt let me live with her, and uh, she lived in Pflugerville outside of Austin. So this is a 99-mile drive each way. And then uh, Brian Danielson, who's Daniel Bryan, yeah. who's American Dragon, he, we were in the same class there. So after a few months, he let me just come crash at his apartment. And it was, it was wow. Yeah. You need, do you realize the similarities that you and Brian, and Brian have had? 
um, through your wrestling career in a way. I mean, you both had the same name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you both started in school together, right? Mm -hmm. You both... Um, both from small town Washington. Yeah, both yeah. from small town Washington. Mm -hmm. You're, you know, you've been in WWE basically the same time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know he's not wrestling now. How did that affect you when you heard that he couldn't wrestle anymore? I cried. Yeah, yeah and I've, um, I've woken up from dreams of him and I wrestling, and then I wake up crying. Uh, it's been a few months since it's happened, but it's happened a, a few times, not a dozen, but but three or four. And uh, yeah, I've, I've, I, he's, it's twofold. He's, he's had a, a really beautiful story and it'd make for a great movie and a really sad movie and all that stuff. But, but being that guy who was the best wrestler in the world by, by a guy like Dave Meltzer, who, mm -hmm. you know, his his job is to watch and 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 wrestling, all kinds of wrestling, and this guy's the best, this guy's the best, this guy's the best, and that's all a matter of opinion. But he's like a Roger Ebert uh, of wrestling, and after all those years, he finally makes it to WWE on TV, and he skyrockets to the top. People love him; they go crazy for him. He he achieved the dream. Main event WrestleMania wins the yeah. title. It's beautiful, and then it's it's done. Uh, right as things were really, like he's still. I think it'd be crazy for him not to go into the Hall of Fame. I think that's oh. a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But his career could have been. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and yeah. hopefully he gets cleared someday and gets back in there. Does that make you appreciate wrestling even more? Oh, it did. Yeah, it yeah. really did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I know that he cried when you actually were competing yeah. in the classic, and you, he gave you a standing ovation when he was actually color commentating. And how did that feel for you? Did you know right away that he? I had no idea he was going to come out there, yeah. um, and so yeah, it did, uh, it was um, a bizarre feeling. It was really nice though. It was uh, beautiful, sad, because um, I don't know when I'd get to be in a ring with him again. You know, and and there was no promises of me going to the WWE at that point. It, it, that was pretty much the end of, mm -hmm. of, of me with this company. Um, thinking it was for 205 Live and, and second opportunities that, that Triple H and Vince McMahon gave me. Um, and through the the pushing of, of Brian Danielson and William Regal, just staying in their ears and give this guy a chance. I'm grateful for all that. But... Uh, I didn't, it, it was just, um, it was 1999 all over again, but it wasn't, it was the, it, it was the end of the story, you know, we're in yeah. the hug and it was just, it was, it was sad, but it was nice. Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> I can see that connection though, that you guys definitely have. Mm. It's, uh, it's beautiful to see for sure. And mm -hmm. do you feel that there's other people that you've been, been able to be that close to in this industry? No, this was, there's a lot of guys who have, um, close with, made great friends with over the years. Um, you know, obviously Paul and I went went through a ton together. Yeah. Uh, uh, R Truth, we used to live together in Memphis. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah. Oh my God, yeah. that must have been fun. It was great. Cause he's like always oh, so oh, full yeah. of energy. Oh yeah. <laughs> if I wasn't such an angry kid at the time, we would have had a lot of fun. Um, Jimmy Yang, I, oh, I, yeah. I, I love hanging out with him. Um, you know, Lance Cade would have been the closest yeah. since yeah. we were in the same class together. But how did that? How did he? How did that hit you? Oh, that one. That one crushed away. me. Yeah. yeah. I've I've had a lot of friends as of you, uh, that have passed, and yeah, and almost always it's it's been through drugs, um, and that was a kid who died at 29 uh, because of his demons or whatever you want to call it. But but he he died from drugs and uh, out of out of all my friends whether it's a, a crash holly or canyon uh you know these these guys who died it was it was really sad but nothing shook me like lance kid since i knew him since he was 18 and yeah it was tough yeah. yeah why do you think that happens i mean in that so many people and this happens in hollywood you know mm -hmm. movie stars this happens to singers and and all of that they work so hard to achieve their dream mm -hmm. They get their dream, and then they're in drugs, yeah. and just everything spirals out of control. Why do you think that happens? I think there's got to be a. I mean, I, I don't know why, but the, imagine uh, several possibilities. Like, um, maybe they think they're invincible. 
because they they're able to have this dream and they put in the effort and they went and did it so they think the drugs aren't going to hurt them i think maybe it has something to do with you have a dream and now that you're actually living it it's no longer a dream so maybe um it wasn't all it's cracked up to be since you could actually obtain it um oh, wow never even looked at it that way that's I think, a yeah. yeah i mean when that makes sense when you when you when you get all about your dream um when 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 Paul and I won the tag titles, what a dream come true. Chilfernaki and I had Denny's that night, you know, and, and that was that was my night, you know, like yeah. oh, it was it's cool. But it never it never really sinks in as anything like you think it would. Um and uh it, maybe it just it's it's boredom. Um I d I don't know what it is, but uh it it seems crazy that there's way more drug addicts doing fantasy dream jobs than there are doing jobs that people would hate doing. You know, yeah. that they're just doing just to just to get by because you have to work. And uh, I think there's less drug addicts uh, in the postal service than there are yeah. in Hollywood. You know, it's, right. it's weird. Right, it is weird. But I think you might have uh, really struck a chord that I never looked at it that way too. Is that once you obtain it, mm -hmm. then what? Then what? Now what? Now, now what? what? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I reached my goal. Something that I've been working so hard for. Mm -hmm. And then you go, okay, I guess that's why you constantly, they say, make new goals, make yeah. new goals, right? It's smart, yeah. Yeah, it is smart, but it can, it can also be, I could totally see you. I think that's totally why now I just realize why people go, you've got to enjoy the journey. Mm. Because the journey is where it's all at, not necessarily when you obtain the goal. Because you obtain it, mm. and like you just said, it didn't feel the way you thought it was going to feel. Yeah, I can imagine somebody uh, getting an Oscar or a Grammy or something, and then they're that night going, "Wow, I thought of this. I I saw somebody else get it, and I thought it was going to feel so different." And it's almost maybe a letdown. Yeah, I would imagine mm -hmm. it has to be. I mean, not that it isn't great. You know, this is great, but that's but that's, this is great. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to have it. But Did, now what? Does it mean mm -hmm. something special for you that you and Paul? had uh i mean your title you had it for 331 days mm. that you had it nearly for a whole decade you kept the the, the record <laughs> Almost on a that year. Oh, oh the record decade. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no i don't mean the rain but i'm talking like i mean literally that's that's a huge accomplishment mm. do you see that you look back and go wow that was a really amazing feat i think it was pretty cool um it it uh I guess it's a, a little stamp they can't take away from us. It was, um, I really enjoyed a lot of the matches Paul and I had. Yeah. Uh, you know, wrestling, whether it's it's the Pipples, Eminem, um, uh, Casey James and Idol Stevens, there's a lot of, lot of good matches we got to have and it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, we got to do it in, in our 20s. I believe I don't know, but it was it was it was yeah. it was a great experience and um, then to have New Day beat it, I, I love New Day. <laughs> yeah. So, like, if anybody's if gonna anybody, beat it, yeah. like, that would be the team I would root for to beat it. That's so, good. so it was really nice. Yeah, yeah, I know. And they, I'm sure for them, it was very special too, knowing that you guys, you know, held it for so long and they were about to break your record, you know. Um, because I'm sure they have a lot of respect for, for the two of you. You guys had such chemistry. Thank you. What, what do you think it was? Um, well, so, so Paul and I are a lot alike in, in most ways, and there's some ways where we're very different. Um, I think as far as in the ring, the balance is, uh, I really, I, I think for myself, I try to maybe overanalyze stuff. I, I don't call it overanalyzing, but I want to really nitpick and, and, and why would we do this and why would we do that and he's a guy that'll just risk his body for a thrill you know for mm -hmm. the thrill of the audience and and to push himself and so and not to say that he didn't have great psychology as well um, but to, to combine the two I would I would go out there and do some risks but nothing like Paul would do he's He's a madman. He, he loves it, and so he'll he'll throw caution to the wind. And so, um, I think it was just a nice combination. And 
and we're similar in a lot of ways, just being fast. And yeah. Do you talk to him anymore? Like, what's he up to? It's probably been about a year. I know he's working for Lucha Underground right now. He's, oh, that's right. He's yeah. leading a, a, a gang of rabbits. <laughs> 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 Which, of course, he would be, right? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> do you miss working with him? I, I, well, I do and I don't. I, if, if I was still working with him, then I couldn't push myself to do other things. Yeah. But I really enjoyed the time we had together. And it's not to say I wouldn't want to do it again. Um, but I, I like to try to reinvent myself and I would love to be a, a bad guy. And is that we were just very happy go lucky baby faces. Yeah. So I want to try something different. Yeah, yeah, no, and you're, you're on it right now well, for sure. Now, when you, you initially got signed with mm -hmm. WWE like in, in 2000, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And that was at MCW? Um, so or in Memphis? Yeah, yeah. I got sent yeah. to Memphis. This was at a Sean school. Got sent to Memphis Championship Wrestling, and it shut down about a year, year yeah, and a half it was later. Yeah, pretty short, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then what happened after that? Like, why didn't it go into a contract where you could, it, you don't know? That was just it. I, it. They they came in. They, you know, I want to say it was a size thing, but there was. Nobody under a certain size got got their contract retained, um, and they they just purchased WCW and they had so many guys and right. um, they didn't have a network at the time they didn't have a brand split so there's only so many spots, and they were moving people to Cincinnati and it's, it's not like it is now where they have almost a hundred people under yeah. developmental yeah there was about a dozen of us in Memphis so. Um, Brian Danielson and I were two of the guys that got released, and uh, I moved out to California to try to get to Japan. There was a connection through Rick Bassman to UPW, and after about nine months here, uh, Chris Benoit was rehabbing in Cincinnati, mm. and so Lance Cade was retained and living in Cincinnati, and he invited me to come sleep on his floor so I could go train with Benoit. And wow. I drove out to Cincinnati. There you go. Yeah. You have done some things that um, that a lot of uh, really big stars have done as well, and that is, I mean, Jericho talks about it, going wrestling for 25 bucks, yeah. you know, or you pay them. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, got to yeah, do yeah. it by the time you pay for the gas. Oh, and you know, all a lot that. of money losers. Yeah, 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 for sure. But you're doing what needs to be done yeah. to, to obtain it. Yeah. Would you have done it any other way? No. No. Yeah. I mean, so... Even 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 the way I I did it, I was brought in at 23 wrestling Kurt Angle, you know mm -hmm. my first SmackDown match, and yeah. so then I'm spoiled already, and and it led to maybe a sense of entitlement, not necessarily that, but but yeah, I just I, it it seemed too easy for me, and so then I didn't really appreciate it, um, not the way I did after I got fired, yeah, you know. Um, but I certainly wouldn't have made it any easier on myself, that's for sure. Um, which I think it's great that you're sharing that, though, too, because if there's, you know, other wrestlers mm. are listening to this up and, up and coming and they they realize that, you know, that was something special that you were handed mm. and you didn't realize it nope. It's at that time. But maybe something like that happens to them. They can go, okay, let me learn. Yeah. Let me learn from this. Yeah. Um, because it is very special and, it, and it's so hard. I mean, I have seen the struggle of so many of you guys mm. and what you go through. And uh, that's why I've, you know, I love this business. I've stayed in there for so long and, and, um, and I want to, you know, share all your stories because of that. Because the journey, mm. oh, for you, what was the lowest point? The, the lowest point, oh, there's, a, there's a, I guess, the, it's a tie. So when I when I got released from my developmental deal, um, it 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 was devastating because, um, you know, the the guy who fired me, who no longer works with the company, he called me up a few days later, and said he saw a tape of my work. Now, he'd never seen me wrestle before, and so wow, kid, you're really good. And I just. I wanted to strangle him through <laughs> right? the phone. Like you, you could have watched this tape a week ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could have watched, you could have watched Brian Danielson a week ago. Right. You not call us up, three days after we've been fired and say right. we're good. <laughs> yeah. Even if we were the best, it doesn't mean we would have kept our jobs. But, right. But yeah. Um, and then there was points over the last seven years um, 
where still I'm, I'm going back to wrestling for free and uh, places don't want to book me. And my wife is saying, look, you don't have to quit wrestling, but but, you know, did you ever think about getting a nine to five? If I get a nine to five, I can't go do tours of Japan. I can't do this or that. And um, so it became a few years of just juggling bills and, and you know, we're starting to get out of debt now. But but uh, because I had this uh, selfish desire to stay in wrestling, we, my, my wife suffered because of it. Yeah. yeah. And does she now look at you and go, wow, you were right for not doing the 95 or... How does she feel about this whole it. return? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She knows like this is what I'm supposed to be, and and um, I I think um, the she's uh, attracted to the idea that I have this idea of what it is I want to do, and I'm gonna fight for it and and not give up. And um, and I was you know I was it was a standing eight count for a while. You yeah. Know? But, yeah. When you were let go from WWE in 2009. Mm. When did you start training right after training others? So probably 2012, 2013, but I don't know. I'm so bad with any of that Oh, that's stuff. fine. Yeah. And, and what did you, I mean, what did you do right after 2009? Did oh. you go wrestle indies? Did you just did, rip back in? Or did you take a moment, I went and process did, everything? I did indies. Indies, did indies yeah. Almost immediately, then did, then did TNA for a while. Um, and there's a lot of great wrestlers there. There were yeah. at the time. The, the roster is completely different now. I'm not saying they don't have great wrestlers there now too. It's just not the the same people I know. Um, but uh, so I gotta gotta hang out with a lot of buddies who I knew from the Indies, uh, Morrissey, Machine Gun, Sanjay Dutt, Amazing Red, Jay Lethal, guys like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it was it was it was fun, and I don't want to um, disparage it, but. There's nothing like the WWE when it comes to, um, it just it's 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 top notch from top to bottom. You know, yeah. they've they've got a hundred people working on setting up the stage in the pyro and right. and fifty people doing catering or working the halls and oh it's and then to have the boss in these meetings with with agents and a staff of writers all trying to write the most perfect show and then having brilliant minds like a you know you know all the minds there uh arn anderson and dean malenko rotundo all these all these guys fit, fit finley trying to teach you how to become a better wrestler and a better storyteller um it's it's the best i become a better wrestler every day that i'm there yeah so i really like that and for you when you were actually training mm. um people was I know you were, like you said, you were a little angry mm. at the time. Mm -hmm. So how was it? Was it easy for you to transfer into training? Um, were you just doing it to pay the bills? Were, like, what really drew you to that? So it was, it was both. I mean, I, I wanted to wanted to pay the bills. Um, I never had so many students that it really helped pay the bills. It, it was better than nothing, but it was, um, it was a poor excuse for a day job. Um, it, I would have been better off making sandwiches somewhere uh, financially. But I really, I really love to train. Um, I want to wrestle still. Yeah, so how was that? Because you were training people mm -hmm. to get to their dream, mm -hmm. to get to their goal, and yet you'd been fired mm -hmm. and you never, you didn't know if you'd ever oh, be I, back in the WWE. I would assume I never would have right? been, yeah. So yeah. did that make you a little bitter inside at all, resentful, um, sad? Anything like that going through while you were training others? Yeah, I guess I haven't thought about it. Um, I know there's there's times where I'd get, I would get disappointed. Like why, why don't these kids want it as bad as I wanted it? Mm. You know why 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 do I need to tell them to go to the gym? Why do I, you know why? I never missed a practice. Why would they miss a practice? You know, why I don't I don't understand it. Don't they don't they want to do this? But my my life isn't supposed to be their life. Their life isn't supposed to be mine. They've they've got their their thing to do, and maybe the thing to do is to, you know, pussyfoot around a little bit with wrestling, and then go back to college and become a, a doctor because that's what they're always supposed to do. Who knows? Mm -hmm. um, but I kept trying to. Put myself in their shoes and it would drive me nuts sometimes why 
it's not hard. Just put in the work. That's all you got to do. Just put in the work. And it's hard work. But it's not really because if you love this, this yeah. is all you got to do. Just do this. Just eat wrestling. It's that simple. And so um, that would be the closest I got to, to being, I guess, uh, heartbroken or upset or angry or anything like that. Was just frustrated that, that they just wouldn't put in the effort that I would have like to have thought I would have put it in, yeah. in their shoes. Yeah. I can totally see that. And I'm sure that that's probably a frustration. I'm thinking now of, of teachers all over the world. Has to be. <laughs> has to be. Yeah. You think about yeah. it. Teachers are sh and you think about teachers, they do not get paid well no, at all. No. Like just, you know, public school, yeah. all of that. And they're going in there, and the kids are just cutting up to no end. Yep. They don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're, they're, they're standing there going, why did I bother putting this whole lesson together, right? Mm -hmm. All of this, and people just don't care. Just to be essentially a babysitter. Yeah. This is what it winds up being. Yeah. yeah. So was there a student of yours when you were training that you were like, oh, this person gets it? Oh, there's, there's, there's been a few, you know. Um, I, there was a kid that recently did the, uh, the UK tournament, uh, uh, Saxon Huxley. Mm -hmm. um, he went to Lance Storm School before mine, then came to my school, then went back to Lance's, came to mine, did three Dr. Tom uh, seminars, and he's from England. So he flew himself around the world, kept saving up money to keep going and training. Um, I've, I've got a kid who started training maybe three years ago who hasn't missed the class yet. And he, it's a 12-week class, but you yeah. can come back if you want. And he he never misses his kid Desi. So, but I've got some kids that that you know they they want to do it. Um, I just wish they were all that motivated. Yeah, yeah. yeah but like I said, there's just that handful that yeah. happens. And even even the ones you have you seen that as well on some of the ones that actually even make the roster, the main roster. Um, or do you pretty much feel like everyone there is just ready to go, all full cylinders? Oh, no, no, I don't think so. No. I don't think they are. No, certainly not. And I'm not asking you to call yeah, them out no, in any no, ways, no, because no. that's not what we're here to do. But, oh, um, but as a general, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, look, I, I was really motivated to get really good at, at wrestling, and then you look at a guy like John Cena and, and go, holy smokes, I've got a long ways to go. Mm. You know, this this guy's by the monitor all the time yeah. he's this then he's you know i i had to wake up early this morning to come hang out with the old buddy to do this this guy's going to see dying kids every day yeah uh, which you just I, I how do you do that and then go put on a smile make them smile and then go out there and wrestle and and people love him and then there's other people that love to boo him and he still has to go out there and and not you know lose his mind yelling at the audience and right. still do this and then go do saturday night live and and I think he's great in the ring, great on the microphone, great attitude, great locker room leader. I've got a, I've got a long ways to go. Yeah, it's it's incredible. I've seen him through the years. It's yeah. it's un <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. He's, the, he's the greatest to me. He's the greatest WWE superstar has ever been. What and, and it's funny because I I know that sometimes what it is mm. in in a way from our audience is um, a jealousy thing. Mm. I don't know what it is. It's mm. like you know you get pushed or you're doing well yeah. and they just <laughs> want to see you not succeed. Yeah. But one thing it's funny because I and I've talked about this before. I see him wrestle, you mm. know, and I think it's great. And yeah. but then he'll get the chance you can't wrestle yeah. but yet he'll have a match with anyone yeah. everyone's standing up on their feet yep. and it's just he's delivering yeah. to no end yeah right it's just, roman reigns is the same I, yes. I haven't seen him have a bad match and so yeah i think it's jealousy because um say there's a guy who just so happens to go with his girlfriend and she's going crazy for one of these two and then i, yeah. I hate this guy <laughs> Yeah, they're too good looking. That's they're it. Too, they're, this. Got yeah. too much going for That's them. That's it. They got their muscles are too big. You know, they've got too much personality. Their smiles too nice. I hate these guys. Yeah. They, so yeah, I don't know. I think I, yeah, it's I I, I understand it why yeah. these guys do because uh, what I think is it's this yeah. jealousy. They're, they're great performers. They never have. I can't think of a bad match I've ever seen Roman Never. Reigns and John Cena's always on fire. Yeah, yeah I, I totally agree, yeah. for sure. I Now, you know, you say that they've, you've seen what they've done and mm. what they're giving back and how they're mm -hmm. in this business and all, but I, I wonder if you see how much you've been able to also give this business in the training that you've done. For mm. Take TJ, 
Perkins. Mm. I mean, you've trained him for some a little some... bit, but he came to my training back back in the day. Yeah. But uh, would you say that you've made a difference in his career? I think I, I would like to say it would have helped more, maybe with advice uh, here and there, and, and helped him out when he needed when he needed somebody. Um, so he he told me this, you know, months ago when we first started out on the road. Uh, he said when he was homeless, I was the only one who answered the phone. Oh. Yeah, they're pretty crazy. Um, wow. And there's people who knew him in wrestling long before I did. Well, not long. He wasn't that old. Uh, but yeah, people that knew him before I did, and and uh, yeah. So I'm glad I could say I did that, and maybe yeah. that helped keep him going. But he's he's uh determined anyways so i think he would have been just fine i was going to say don't don't undermine though on, uh, as to what your how much of you're making an impact mm. to these students to everybody who's training and touching because um something like that yeah you can think maybe but maybe not maybe your answer was the thing that actually <laughs> helped well I, yeah i could i could use the ego boost right yeah <laughs> Yeah. No, but do you see do you see the difference that you make when uh, you're training? Um, do you embrace that? I mean, I guess I'd, I'd feel selfish to think so, but I really enjoy um, helping them become better performers, my students and stuff. And there's a uh, a student I have now, Fidel. And, uh, oh, I know Fidel. You know Fidel Bravo? I do. Yeah, he came yeah. and uh, he was actually sitting in did luchando right. with us. That's right. That's yeah. right. Um, yeah, he's great. And uh, boy, does he talk so highly about you. It, That's why I was going to say him and Jake Atlas, another yeah. one, they speak so high of you. Yeah. Oh, uh, flattering yeah. stuff. So tell me about Fidel. Um, yeah. So he he did, uh, you know, SmackDowns will have matches before the, the doors open to see the locals and see, see what's going on. And... Uh, they asked him to send in more information, you know, afterwards. Not, I mean, doesn't mean he'll get a tryout or anything, but, but, uh, you know, he, he was really excited about it and the, the big difference uh, that was made from him coming to my training. And I guess my specialty is just fine-tuning stuff. Anybody can teach people how to bump and lock up and do these certain mm -hmm. moves, but I guess I have a real nitpicky way about me, so <laughs> you know why would you do this and when you do that? And but that makes a difference. I think everything's so. in the details. I think so. Everything. Yeah, I think so too. Yes. Yeah, I really do. Um, I mean, I could go on and on about why a tackle drop down is silly if you don't do it right, and I think a lot of that has to do with with uh, writing with Mr. Regal for so long. Oh and he yeah. Just <laughs> pick stuff apart, and I appreciated that. Yeah. 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 So, so you do see that though. You see the the overall like. Oh making... yeah. Why would you do? Why would you do this? Yeah. Why would you do that? You know. Well, it's because I got to do this to this to get to that drop kick. Well, but why? Why? And if we need to get to the drop kick, let's figure out a different way to get there, a way that makes sense, and you know, with a real motivation behind it. And um, and look, I understand why if some people think I'm a boring wrestler because I'm. Because I'm doing this. I've never heard this. that of you. <laughs> never. Well, it's fine if you did. <laughs> no. It, it, but uh, because some people are just, um, who who cares why there's a car crash? Let's, people want to see a car crash. That's like in a movie. I want to see right. an explosion. I don't care why there's an explosion. And I'm more concerned as to why is there an explosion. But that's a storytelling. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I, I For me, I think it makes sense. Sometimes I, I'll see some things and I'll go... And like in movies, and I yeah. go, that makes absolutely no sense. No sense. You lost me. Yeah. Right, you lost yeah. me. The the realness of the whole thing yeah. just bleh, yeah. died. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you feel that being uh, a trainer has helped you um, oh, be yeah. a better performer? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. For sure. For sure. Um, you know, stuff I wouldn't have thought about, and as I'm watching kids do stuff, I well, you should do it like this because this makes sense. That doesn't make sense. And stuff I hadn't considered before, but just having to watch the basics over and over again and then just adjusting grips and stuff to to make more sense. Like, a like simple one is, like, you have a person in a wrist lock. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to do with that wrist lock? All you're doing is just holding on. It's like riding a bull. You're, you're not going to get anywhere with that. So if you have them in a wrist lock, wouldn't you try to get them on the ground? So switch the grip into this and just little details like that. So That's awesome. Yeah, you should be going for a win. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, or 
and and nobody's going to submit to a wrist lock you're just holding on to a hold so it's almost like you've been able to step outside of yourself and look yeah i think that's fair to say right yeah, yeah. and so that's when it's kind of like some people ask me for example i have a coach um mm. you know a vocal coach and all and they go, wait, but you know how to sing. Why would you still have a coach? I'm like, wait, so a football team has a coach, yeah, yeah, right? There's, yeah. there's a, the quarterback has a coach. Yeah. Like, why? Because the coach is on the outside looking in, yeah. and it's all the difference in the world. So you've been able to do both, yeah. which I think totally helps. And I want to talk about your return. I'm so excited <laughs> about this. So how did it even come about that you got the call for mm. the classic, right? Is yeah. that how it all started? Yeah. Um, so... Previous to that, um, you know, Mr. Regal and and and, and Dragon uh, Danielson, they, you know, they put in a word for me, and Mr. Regal was saying that there might be a cruiserweight thing coming up, and that was maybe two to three years before the tournament ever happened. Um, wow. It was a long, a long time in the making since it's the idea of them thinking about, uh, not just him thinking about it, but the company starting to think about this to where they started actually doing it. And in the meantime, I got I got brought down to do some uh, some guest training to see if I'd be interested in being a coach. At the Performance Center? At, at the Performance Center. And- um, How was that for you? Oh, it's, it's nice. I, I mean, I like it. And if if I couldn't wrestle anymore, I would love to do it. Yeah. But, um, You'd leave LA. <laughs> so this was part of the, this was part of the thing. I. I so, so we love it here. Right? I do. It's my favorite, I know. and I'm not from here, but I love it I here. I know, me yeah. too. <laughs> um, so, so Baldo, a train. He, uh, he he's in his office. He says, "Make you look. Uh, um, we need a trainer." And uh, I said, but I'm, "I'm a wrestler." He says, I, I said, "Look, I, I would love to be a trainer. I would love to be a wrestler. I'd love to be a, a writer. I'd love to be an agent. I'd love to be a trainer. Um, but I'm 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 a wrestler right now." He says, yeah, but, uh, you know, uh, it, I said, and, and, and I don't, you know, I, I live in L.A. My wife, my wife lives there. She's got a job. Um, and I, I don't want to kidnap her. Uh, yeah. He says, yeah, well, out, out of sight, out of mind, you know, if you if you came down here, you could, they'll see you and there's a better chance you becoming a wrestler. And I said, but, but I am a wrestler. And, and so it was when as broke as we were yeah. it was a real gamble not to just take the job because it's still a dream job but it wasn't my dream job at the right. time and then same conversation with canyon seaman and then and triple h by the time we talked he said look i already i already, I already know the deal you you want to be a wrestler so I'm, you know i'm flattered by the offer whatever the wording was but I just, this is this is what i want to do and um he said, well, the, the truth is if you were a trainer, it would be a lot harder to book you as a wrestler. So wound up being a, a good gamble in the long run. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you just decided, no, I, not. I, I want to wrestle. Like if, wrestle if, yeah. if, if, it was, if it was, look, we're never going to hire you as a wrestler again, I would say, okay, I'd like to go home and think about it. But they didn't close that door. But they didn't close the door. So they didn't close your dreams. Yeah, that's right. I like it. That's so right. you gambled on it. I and gambled it worked. On it. Yeah. 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 Which is a big lesson to I think. I, well, it, I mean it worked yeah, for you. It worked right? for me. But it worked for me. If you if you have something and you want to do it, like you gotta you gotta bet on yourself. Yeah. 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 Now when did that come about when you actually were training Eva Marie and Daria? So Eva Marie Geez, time flies. Maybe a year and a half, two years ago. Yeah, time flies. It You're really right. It really does. I know. <laughs> uh, Daria was about a year ago. Um, this is Kenyon uh, Seaman, the head, the head of talent relations. I believe is his official title. I'm, I'm not sure, um, but uh, he's he's uh, always been real good to me and sent people that were out in the LA area, whether they were models or football players that they're potentially looking at and. He sent um, her, another woman, and, and a fellow named Mata. Uh, I remember Mata. Yeah. From Tough Enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great I, look. Oh, great like, intensity. Oh yeah, my, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Why did he leave? Do you know why he left? I don't know. I haven't talked to him since he left. And it, it, uh, I mean, I'm wondering if maybe, you know, because he has a family as well. Yes. So I'm wondering if maybe he just looks at it and goes, you know what? I cannot be on the road 300 plus dates a year. Like, maybe that just was... It could be. Because it's not for everybody. Yeah. It's not. It's, you know. 
uh, and he didn't so so he would have been a great wrestler but he didn't his is his uh, stepping his toes dipping his toes into wrestling is is going doing this tough enough thing mm -hmm. and and if that doesn't work out okay he didn't he didn't starve for it. He didn't drive around the country for years. He didn't gamble on himself, hoping that maybe someday he'll get a chance. He had a chance right away. And, right. And so how how bad did he want it in the first place? And there's a lot of, um, I'd say it happens with the divas because they get, they tend to get brought in, like diva search gals would get brought in without having to go through that stuff. Right. Not saying not saying women like like Bailey or Sasha or anything, but I mean people that are brought on the road immediately now there's more men like that. Um, they'll say, Oh, this is this is my dream job. I just love it. Like, you don't you, you don't know what love is when it comes to this. Right. Um, so You haven't literally starved that's for it. it. Like, literally. Like um, my my sister used to get so mad at my mom. My mom get mad at my sister, and she'd my sister'd slam the door and I hate you, I hate you, but my mom still loved her. And so, like when wrestling slammed its door in my face and said, "I hate you, I hate you," I still loved it. You know, like great analogy. Can 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 you do do you love it like that? Right. Yeah. So that's who knows. Maybe maybe they would someday, but it would be shocking to think that it took a game show for them to realize that this is what they love so bad. And who yeah. knows, maybe that, like you said, everyone's got a different journey. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And who knows, he might like step away, Mata, yeah. and and then realize, look back and go, wait, <laughs> wait a yeah. minute, who knows. Yeah. But anyway, we were we were talking about Eva, and mm -hmm. uh, how was it training um, females? Was it your first time training some females? I had some come and join my class. Uh, first one quit after two days. Oh, ouch. <laughs> yeah, I've had a few quit after one day. And really? it's not its not really that hard, um, but... But if you're gonna quit that quickly, then it's definitely not for you. Yeah, it's, it's surprising how many people quit after a day. It's uh, kind of like the Army. There's some people that go into, you know, like, oh, yeah. you know, what is it, the, uh, my God, my dad right now would be looking at me going, really, you don't know, <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel? I'm trying to think of uh, when they go in, the very first. Um, basic training? Thank you, yeah. basic training, yeah. Uh, I mean, some just don't make it. Yeah. They don't make it after the first day. Yeah, of course. And then you got to see who's tough enough. Yeah. You have to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, she was great. I was shocked when, when uh, Mr. Regal, called me about it initially and I said, well, is she any good? You're talking about Eva or you're Eva, talking about Derek? Eva, Eva okay, that is. Yeah. And he says, we have, we have no idea. And uh, so I was expecting to train maybe once or twice a week tops and she would come in every day off. She would, she'd land on the airplane and come and train and we put in 99 hours together. And wow. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't she, get to 100. Really, Brian? Almost. <laughs> almost. I like yeah. it. 99 sounds better. 99, yeah. yeah just an hour show. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, she seemed like she was definitely improving. We could yeah. see that on Total Divas. Yeah. For sure. Uh, I have no idea where she's at now. Like, I just... Making movies last night. Making movies, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm like, I kind of want to see her in the ring. I do, sure. too. I do, too. But it's been so long, and she need to... A refresher course. Yeah, it's not like she'd been wrestling for 15 years and then took a few months off. Like, she, she's had a handful of matches, you right. know, so... Right, right. Yeah. What yeah. about Daria? She just seems like she's going to be... Amazing. I hope so. She's got a great attitude. You know, they both yeah. they both did, and uh, uh, they're both athletes. But but one one played soccer on a high level, and the other one punched people in the face. Yeah. Um, yeah. Darius just uh, she's she gets it in a lot of ways. Like this is this is what it is. You got to be tough. You got to stick it out. And the advice that I, I gave her and Mata. Um, like look for mentors when you're down there and uh, and stick around like if they need volunteers for stuff so what Daria would do is if a NXT girl wanted to try a new move whatever the move is she would stay after practice to take mm -hmm. it with her and, and so then you know the the Sarah's that are the coaches down there would be there seeing that and right. then that gives them, her more time with the coaches to to talk and learn to take bumps and show Smart. enthusiasm and yeah it, it, even if even if you don't like it, at least be smart enough to fake you like it. Yeah. And 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 people aren't even that smart, you know. Yeah. But I think she actually does like it. Right. So that, and it too. That do helps. you do you feel like she's gonna be anywhere near, ready to make her way into WWE? 
I hope so. Um, I think it'll just take a take Do you a think chance. she's ready? Do you see her being ready? Like, you see what's going on right now with Charlotte, Sasha, Bailey, Becky, Nikki. You know, it's just... These girls are really good right now. They're really good, right? They're really good right now. Um, Mickey James coming back. Yeah, yeah. And I think she's better now than than when she left. I think so, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe it's the same thing with her, because, you know, she had gotten it released. Yep. And I know that we, you know, we she actually was on on my show as well, and uh, she talked about how she really wanted to come back, and mm. it was just like that <gasps> hunger, right? Mm-hmm. Something got taken away that she wasn't ready. Yeah. She wasn't ready to go. Yeah. But she said, "Thank God that I did get released. Mm. Appreciation. Mm. Plus, she got married. She's mm. got a kid. Mm-hmm. Like if the, all of this wouldn't have happened, yeah. right? Yeah. But now it's made her even um, this taste sweeter to her. Yeah. You know, yeah, and, I'm, I'm right there with her. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so um, we were talking about how with Daria then, when you see the rep- women's revolution yeah. right now, like, what do you feel makes her not ready yet? Uh, so I haven't, I haven't seen her in months when I was down there last. She was a lot better than when I was there, you know, a couple months before that. Um, so I'd have to see her again and, and, and see how she's doing. It was, uh, this would have been a year ago, stuff like when to fire up. This is a problem I think some people have is that they think I need to show emotion now and I don't want to accuse her of this now. This is yeah. then and I, I and she'll ask advice and I'll tell her straight yeah. to her face. Yeah. You don't it, going ah or come on this isn't something that you you force. You have to really feel it. You know and, and so when it's time you think you got to play to the crowd to get them to react but you got to you got to really feel it and think that you're really in this fight and then be screaming mad at this person that you want to kill because they've done you dirty and they've here's your chance to get them and now you're you're blowing your steam and 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 then the people will react to that right i, I think and so the the emotion seemed forced the the moves look good the, yeah. the stuff everything looked good it just seemed like she was watched too much wrestling in, in the sense that, well, this is when wrestlers do this now instead yeah. of feeling it. That takes years of experience. You know, I think that that's one of the things that, um, God, you know, I would I would hear people talking about wrestling, and I would hear some people, oh, my God, I always got so mad when people would be like, oh, but it's fake, mm. you know, or something. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Like, you have no idea. Do you? And I always say, mm. do you ever go to a movie? You know, no, I'm not talking about a uh, based on a real story mm. movie or anything like that. Like, just... Do you realize that's scripted? Mm. But yet you get lost in it, you feel it, you mm-hmm. cry, mm-hmm. you laugh, you what? It's exactly, there's an art to it here. Yeah. But let me tell you, I know you guys got hurt a lot. That's not fake. I know that I actually got put into some situations. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget when Umaga did the splash on me and the, and um, oh my gosh, he. Uh, I he remember did Charlie Hawson and you flying. Well, yeah, well, that, was, <laughs> that one wasn't scripted. <laughs> That was kind of an oops. <laughs> um, yeah, for the, any of you that didn't see that, actually, it was on the outside of the yes. road. I was on my way out. Yes. Just, you know, as I get out and I walk across the apron, <laughs> and all of a sudden, he came in to do his charge. Didn't see me. I don't nope. know. How do you not see me? I'm wearing white. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, he just slammed on the on, on the ropes, and I just went oh. like, like a slingshot, oh. right? <laughs> Oh, brutal. And, and you can hear me. Oh, my God. I, I actually tore my uh, ligament in my right? wrist. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, when you're not expecting that, oh. and you're not a worker, yeah. I mean, that, it just hurts. Of course. <laughs> and I was just screaming, and I'm like, ah, what did just happen to me? <laughs> but, of course, it got turned into a storyline, which <laughs> that's what's so great about this business, yeah. is how that can get turned in. And next thing you know, Viscera and Charlie Haas are teaming up, because Viscera and I had had a thing. Thing, right course, in the storyline yeah. and then all of a sudden viscera when he sees that it gets turned into how dare you <laughs> and then they turn on me and then they're a tag team <laughs> so that's pretty fun <laughs> but i'm just saying that some of the ones that were planned yeah. like with umaga now i i remember uh i had i think it was a Simon Simone drop i believe of the or the um now i can't think of the name of it but um because he did a, a few moves on me and i remember i hit and for the longest time, I thought there was padding mm. in the ring. No, there's boards. Yeah, there are boards yeah, underneath yeah. the ring. 
And I just remember uh, Chris actually put me on a stretcher, mm. you know, storyline, take me back there. And he's like, how are you? Every, to everybody else, I'm like, oh, I'm fine, fine, fine. To him, the trainer, I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like I just got hit. And especially the next day, I'm like, I feel like I just got hit by a Mack truck. <laughs> it hurts so bad. Yeah. And you guys do this day in and day out. Yeah. So that's why when people would be like, this is fake, I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> but it's true, the emotions, mm. you know, getting back to like, that's, the, I would sit in those, in those, you know, I'm in the front of the front row, in the mm. best seat of the house. And I w could see the difference of somebody that was acting the part mm -hmm. versus somebody that really believed in it. Mm -hmm. And I think, like you say, it's more than just um, the moves, learning the moves. It's really getting lost into your character. Yeah, that's it, exactly. Yeah. So for you, this character, mm -hmm. you kind of had this character at TNA before, would you say? A little bit, so my character keeps changing around. The, 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 the one in TNA, and I didn't really get to fully explain it, but the idea was that I was trying to run an experiment that everything is one thing and I can, I can control uh, the world around me. And so by winning the X Division title, I proved my point because I set out this goal mm -hmm. and, then, and then I got it. And I was supposed to hopefully spiral into this, this craziness, but it never really came to fruition. Um, I guess now I'm a guy who's... Like my my goal is to make it to the Hall of Fame, and by doing that, I've got to win championships and I've got to go on to great things. And right now, I'm just trying to to uh, keep a job because I've been losing matches and stuff. So, I'm um, right now I'm desperate. I'm a desperate man who's yeah. who who has to just win by hook or by crook. Do you feel a little bit because you got let go in 2009 and you got the we were getting into the uh, how you got into the cruiserweight. Mm -hmm. Uh, somehow we got <laughs> sorry. Up. It's okay. That, yeah. I love it. The yeah. stories go everywhere. Um, so when you finally get, like, go back to the story of you, like, getting the call. How did that yeah. feel? Oh, it was great it, when when it finally happened. Because um, yeah. now that's two, three years, like you said, oh, that was yeah. in the making. Yeah. So you finally get the call. Were you yeah. one of the first to know that it's happening. Um, it's, I, I think I think so. I think I, if I, to my understanding, I was the first American phone call. Um, and then had to um, pass. Uh, it was like they it was they they did this whole background check, and so I was yellow carded, mm. uh, What's yellow that mean? yellow flagged. Yeah. Uh, means that um, they had to take caution and, and bring me in because I've 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 I got in trouble in the past. Um, said a lot of horrible things, done a lot of horrible things. Um, about the company? About the company. Because you were angry. Oh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. This was during your angry spell. Yeah, and immature yeah. and uh, ungrateful. And um, and then even stuff like uh, like conspiracies. Like, you can't, you can't have you talking about conspiracies. <laughs> like, I, I understand. Uh, yeah. Um, any any of that stuff, like, you got to, you got to, clean up your act, you got to do this, you got to do that, and done, done deal, so. Um, I bet it, that was so refreshing for you to get another chance. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah it's a dream come true, and. Uh, um, but you look different, you're you're so different. Thank you, y Yeah, I, I mean, no, in okay. a good way, okay. in a good way. I could see the anger is, is gone. Well, thank basically. you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which, but, but you said, I mean, it, it made you who you are. Yes. For sure. Yeah. So um, I always tell people, no matter what happens to you, mm. if you get let go, mm -hmm. just zip it. <laughs> Don't burn a bridge. Yes. Right? Yes. Why burn a bridge? Why burn a bridge? Because you never know what can come later on. And mm -hmm. look at this. You had to fight even harder. With, with really successful and influential people pushing for me for years. Yeah. In, in the way of Regal and Danielson. Danielson being the top guy at the time, saying, hey, you know, what about my buddy here? Regal being so well respected uh, in the office and uh, in the locker room, pushing for me constantly. And if it wasn't for those guys, I, I, I don't think there's any chance I would have gotten this second chance. And, and so then I would have wound up just being a guy who used to be good and now can't get, get any work on the Indies. And, um, the indie style is different than the WWE style. And WWE style is the style I like. It's it's 
about stories as opposed to um, just a series of moves that, that go for ah, 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 reactions. Right. I prefer the one big reaction at the end. If we can get reactions in between, that's fine, but it's all building for a moment. And yeah. That's the way I look at it. So when you actually won the, um, not well, you were runner-up for the, uh, the classic. Uh, right? Or no, quarter, uh, yeah, yeah, quarterfinals. Yeah. Did you feel like that was going to be it? Did you, because you didn't know that 205 was coming. Yeah, didn't know right. 205 was coming. I knew there was a bunch of guys getting contracts, and then uh, got told afterwards, um, like, maybe, you know, maybe in the future we, you know, we're thinking about doing this cruiserweight thing, we might we might want to bring you in here and there. Uh, okay, it's, it's, it's good, but I was also, I, there's, there's nothing more I can do. Um, yeah. Uh, I, you know, uh, poured my heart out, did, did the best I could, and... I guess that's that. So how did that, that feel when you are when you go home, mm -hmm. you put your bags down, mm -hmm. you're absorbing everything that just happened, mm -hmm. what's running through your mind? Um, Do you remember that? Yeah. Uh, it was a high and a low um, because I, I'm, there's, there's Drew Gulak and Tony Nese got signed after me and they're great wrestlers and I think, it, you know, uh, but besides that, they just they signed a, a dozen different cruiserweights from that tournament, and I wasn't one of them. And just and I, I thought my my performances were good. I thought uh, told good, unique stories in each of them, and I guess that's 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 it. Do that's, you start doubting yourself? Um, I don't know if I doubt myself, but getting it like where do I go now? What do what do I do? So uh, talking with Sho Funaki, he was trying to get me out to Japan, and and even Nabushi, the uh, the Japanese guy who I lost to, he's influential in a company called DDT out in Japan, and uh, talked with him about him bringing me out there to DDT, and I was making plans to go out to Japan already. Well, I love the fact that you just don't sit around. <laughs> like, yeah, you're you're yeah, going to action. Yeah, like, I love okay, that. Yeah, Is uh, it what do you, what would you say like overall? Uh, What's the thing that kept you going? Like, just when you're you're at those low moments, you don't mm. know if you're ever going to come back to WWE. Mm. You mm. love this business mm. so much. What kept you going? Um, hmm. I mean, I, I guess it, it's, it's it's my purpose. Um, but it seems kind of stupid just to no. to 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 tug emotions through fake fighting or whatever you want to call it, but. Uh, it's my favorite form of art. I yeah. think it is art. It is art, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, I think so. Yeah. yeah. And and and. Um, if it wasn't, you wouldn't have those. I mean, look at WrestleMania. Mm. Look at all those people that sit in the stands and and you know the arenas and everything. Look at their faces mm -hmm. when they see these matches and they're like, <gasps> right? And yeah. there's the emotion that this business brings out in yeah. people. That's art. Yeah. It, there's something fascinating about that and. This business, it just night after night after night. What do you think this business has been like? You know, the shows, mm. uh, the longest running TV um, show ever. Yeah. There's something there. Yeah. yeah it's, it, 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 uh, there's matches, that, there's rarely, but it happens where matches with people, you know, the audience members will cry afterwards because yeah. it, it, it tugged on them. There's plenty like uh, Santino, he's, my favorite. I think he's so funny. And, <laughs> Santino Marella. Oh, oh he's so God, good. I know. And, and so you have that, and you can have that on the same show, and yeah. you know you can you can feel elated when when something like when Bailey won the the, yes. the title this last week. Um, you know you can you can feel devastated like when when uh, Owens turned on Jericho, and that happened in the same the, the same night. Yeah. You know, and and even in that one segment with Jericho and Owens. People are laughing hysterically, and right. by by the end, you know they're feeling bad for Chris Jericho, who's yeah, who's played a a, a, a comical schmuck, yeah, and and now oh, how could you do this to right. this guy? And it's um it's great, and you you get no second takes, um, and it's it's physical to boot, and you have to be able to think on the fly if anything goes wrong to still try to stay in the moment you can't okay what do we do now you have to not only think but you have to think 
in the way that what would what would this character be doing and you can't even think what would this character be doing you have to think as this character and and react instantly and I don't know, I, I love it I, I think it's it's my favorite and so this is this is why I want to yeah. not do anything else so do you, in those lower moments did mm -hmm. you just keep telling yourself I can do this I can do this I will do this I will yeah. do this yeah. yeah yeah I'm supposed to do this. even if you didn't even believe it sometimes yeah right? yeah, you just... yeah yeah it's gonna be whether it's 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 every every indie show uh, is an opportunity to go out there and, and display my art I guess mm -hmm. and, and try to tell a story and try to uh, and it sounds um, selfish and it is but like I'm I'm performing for me and not the audience so the the the, the office they'll want a certain story to get across and that's that's the job but uh, I'm I'm doing this for my own satisfaction as opposed to getting reactions out of the crowds but my satisfaction comes from pulling these emotions out of them yeah so it's, it's yeah so I, I see it yeah, yeah, yeah. there's I, nothing wrong with you doing this for you too like I, you, you I need to enjoy it yeah I wouldn't be doing it just to get a reaction I yeah I, I do it because this is this is what I love but when when you're when you do something in passion same mm. thing singing or whatever mm. I mean you see a performer that's singing her heart mm. out because she just loves it that's what she's gonna do she's gonna draw that people in yeah. because of that you can't fake it yeah so yeah now, when you got, um, when you were at home, mm -hmm. you know, how long before you found out 205 is coming and you're officially a part of it? Or how did that whole thing come about? It's hard to say, maybe, maybe three weeks to a month. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you were already planning to go to Japan, but you hadn't gotten was, there I, yet? I, I already, already making plans. I hadn't gotten any flight inf information or anything, but, but uh, through, through even my buddy Joy Ryan, who also works for DDT, uh, he got me contact info. I'm emailing them to go out there, and then I get the call. And all right, never mind. Wow. I'm glad they didn't buy a ticket. If they would have bought a ticket, I would have went out and honored the, the tour, and then and then, then uh, done yeah. This. yeah. And how did that feel then? Two or five? I mean, oh, just... it was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I was. Did um, you cry? I I don't think I did. Yeah, and I I, I, I had to admit, yeah, because I've I've, I've I've admitted to crying several times on the There's already. nothing wrong with that. Um, <laughs> X Mach and I were talking about that because he's very emotional yeah. as well. And he said, you know, I'm never going to apologize for that. Yeah. And I'm the same way. I don't think that you, just because you're in this business, you have to be hard and tough yeah. and not shed a tear. Yeah. You no, know? I'm, I'm certainly not. This is yeah. full of emotions. Yeah. Yeah. It's... And you've had your, your fair share of them for sure. Your wife, how excited was she when, uh, now she wasn't uh, tough enough. Uh huh. The very first one, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. she was a uh, runner up, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So did she? And I know she did some more. I mean, she continued from there. We, yeah, she went uh, went out to Japan, lived in the dojos for about four months, and then um, she, her thought was, she doesn't. She likes the WWF stuff. She isn't crazy about the Japanese stuff. She didn't want to live out in Japan, and so made a decision and figured that since WWE didn't want her. Um, and she didn't want to do indies because she didn't love it the way I did. Mm -hmm. Like she loves WWF, but doesn't love wrestling, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Um, she loves that that version, mm -hmm. and uh, so then she she hung it up. So if you want to even call it that, she did yeah. it for you know a year or so. Um, but now she uh, designs all my gear, makes my jackets, makes Does my she pants. really? Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't even know that. Oh yeah. Wow! Yeah. So she's she's definitely still in the business. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I, um, if I didn't have the leather jacket, I nobody would have cared about me, and that was her idea. Oh, that's great! Off, so yeah. Yeah. yeah, the leather jacket for sure. I actually wore one in today. I was <laughs> feeling my Kendrick. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. That's great. So she's very supportive of you being back. And, oh yeah, you know? yeah. She's thrilled to death. Now, yeah. are you yeah. on the road three hundred plus dates a year? Nope. Right now, I just do Raws and Smackdowns. Uh, by uh, your choice? No, they they, they they only have one um, cruiserweight match uh, uh, per house show, and right now Neville's the champ, mm -hmm. and he's a heel, I'm a heel. Right. Uh, so unless they were to put us in a tag match, it wound up being, they're not going to do heel-heel. Right. And, um, Is that okay with you, that you... Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm fine. I get to teach. I get to teach on Thursday still. I get to do two, two days a week where I get to see friends from both rosters which is something only us uh, uh only us uh, cruiserweights get to do 
right. as far as the roster goes, yeah. which is really nice because I've made friends in the past on both rosters. Um, and if you're on the road, the Cruiserweights are on the road one day longer than everybody else because they would travel with Raw and then have to do SmackDown. So it's All Friday, right. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And then living in California uh, with the travel, it's... Yeah. It, yeah, it, a lot it, of red eyes. Yeah, yeah, it'd be a busy schedule, um, but I would welcome it if it if it uh, came about. But in the meantime, I'll. I'll yeah, what do you do energy. on your on your off time that has nothing to do with wrestling? Oh, um, I watch a lot of YouTube. It yeah. Sounds stupid. Uh, Not at all. But uh, so, like, I just try to figure out uh, the universe, like we all do. So that's it. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so you're yeah. into that. Like trying to, f do you believe in God? Yeah. Or do you so believe in there's power? Like what's the? Yeah, so I think I think when, when people say like, uh, you know, the idea of God's Godzilla, they don't believe in God. Uh, my question is, well, well, go ahead and describe the God you don't believe in. You know, so if you're saying a, a guy with a, a robe and a beard and gray hair and all that stuff that lives in the clouds, I think okay, that's that's fine. If you think that's silly, that's yeah. I'm mm -hmm. I'm not going to disagree with that, but I th I think God is the to me is the term that you give for at least I do for the energy that makes everything move or whatever started it all or even if you were to say it's a it's a a, a big bang from this finite everything and this infinite nothing that it explode and expanded then what is that and is that not god uh so yeah i think i think everything is god uh, i think everything's one thing experiencing itself um under the illusion of separation and that's what experience is have you always felt this way or did you find this along your path in your journey oh no i, I keep keep changing my mind as to what it is so this, this yeah. is what i've been stuck on for going on 10 years now I would say this is this is what I've has this helped you in oh, tough times oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Um, you know by by blaming others it's that's that's silly you're you can only control so much and what you can control is is your perception uh, and your hopefully you can control your emotions based off those perceptions mm -hmm. and if I were to practice what I preach and believe that that everything is just one thing experiencing itself, then how am I going to go get mad at this or this extension of God? You know, how can I go and blame that and not myself? Um, I think that's silly. And so if you just treat every everything as if it were you um, and the way you'd want to be treated, it's a simple golden rule, but yeah. it, it, it works. When you were so angry, when you were talking to me, you know, as a kid, mm -hmm. do you feel like it would have been so helpful that you had this connection? If I would have then? God, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Did anybody try and you were like, don't talk to me about that? Um, my aunt took us, and she isn't really a church goer, but she took us one time when I was maybe 10. I found it to be so dreadfully boring. <laughs> um, I, look, I, I, love, I love to learn, but I hated school because it just, you can take a horse to water, you know what I mean? But yeah. I, like, I've got to decide when I want to learn and, and when I want to figure out the meaning of life and all that stuff and if there's a meaning to it and ask the big questions I, I don't want to be told. So, yeah, I had, to, I had to come to that point. So I had asked you what your lowest point was. I know you, mm -hmm. we, we discussed one. You said that there was two. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember what the second one was? Oh. And there's a reason I'm asking for that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the, 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 the two would have been, yeah, when, when I got released from developmental and then um, the the time when my wife was saying look you gotta you gotta go get a real job mm. you know um which what does a real job mean to you I, to me it meant gotta quit wrestling and she said you can still wrestle but but meaning i've got to put uh not put wrestling as my priority and, and i didn't want to like I, i've loved wrestling since i was eight this is this is it so yeah i don't want to quit yeah. wrestling yeah so what's your highest high? Um, hmm. I don't know. Like, my wedding day was great, you know, of course. Uh, <laughs> she loves you for that. <laughs> well, but it's true. Like, it's, yeah. it's perfect. It's a, it was a perfect day. How did you guys even meet? We met 
at an indie show in Alaska. Really? Yeah, and... This was after she'd been on Tough Enough? After yeah. she'd been on Tough Enough, and she was a jerk. <laughs> and I was, in the, I was in the ring before the show practicing with Frankie Kazarian, uh, and she's standing on the apron, and normally if you're practicing stuff, somebody's standing on the apron, you tag them in. Tag her in, and she walks over like this to Frankie, kicks him in the nuts, uh, and then tags back out. <laughs> I hate this girl. <laughs> and then uh, in the airport, we realize we're at the wrong gate. All of us are going back to LA. She's going to Seattle. And so everybody rushes off. And I just I say, hey, it was nice to meet you. And she goes, later, dude. So oh, I hate this girl. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Such a challenge oh. to you, though. <laughs> yeah, she knew what she was doing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we met again in Japan. Samoa Joe and I wrestling to Cork and Hall for Zero One, and cheerleader Melissa, my wife Taylor, they were working for Arzion. Their boss took them to the Cork and Hall show, and Joe and I knew uh, Melissa quite well from out here. Mm -hmm. So their boss invited us out to, to dinner, and, uh, and so we go out to dinner, Korean barbecue, I wasn't drinking, and uh, uh, she just, I, all sorts of stuff I can't say on here, but you're not drinking? And then just started tearing into me with nasty names for not drinking. And, uh, well, I'll show you, you know. And then I I got trashed. And then by the end of it, I'd thrown her into a bathroom with my tongue down her throat. <laughs> and, yeah. And now we're married, yeah. Real romantic story to tell the kids if you ever have them, right? God, yeah. that's funny. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> well, yeah, it was meant to be. It's it meant, was to, meant be. to be. Yeah, <laughs> it's meant to be. And we grew up 45 minutes apart. We we, really? we both go home together, uh, fly into SeaTac, uh, and go see our families 45 minutes apart. So, yeah, how long did you guys be. court each other? Um, before it had, like it, you just knew. It was it was uh, so she was living out there for a few months. I'd go back and forth to Japan, and. Um, when she left Japan, shortly thereafter, I got signed by WWE, and they said, we, we want to sign you, but we're not going to fly you in out of Seattle. And it was, it was JR and Mr. Briscoe, and I said, well, how about Tampa? I wasn't going to say, how about Oklahoma? Right. I said, how about, <laughs> how, about, how about Tampa? And they said, okay, you got a contract. And so then uh, when I went back up to Seattle, I, I, I told, told my girlfriend at the time, I said, uh, I said, look, I gotta move. I said, uh, we're at PF Chang's talking about serious stuff. I said, uh, so do you wanna do you wanna come with me? And she said, yeah, I'll go with you. We'd oh. only been dating just in Japan and then for a couple weeks in the states. So wow. a couple months all together, yeah. and she she took the plunge. That's cool. Yeah. So after you moved to Tampa, how long before you guys got married? Oh, way too long. Uh, maybe six years. Oh, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, okay. it was way too long. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. You know, I always tell people don't don't be scared about dating somebody that long either. Yeah. I think it's. I mean, I dated for five years. Uh, my husband, yeah. CJ, and I before, uh, before we got married, and yeah. I think that that made it actually. We had our time of being boyfriend girlfriend, yeah. then being engaged, yeah. and then being married. To me, there's no rush. I mean, that's what I thought. Yes. Yeah, did she want it earlier? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> but but I, but the thing is, I I you know I was committed to her. Yeah. so early on so what made you scared to take the plunge i thought what's the point it seems so stupid like what i'm i'm lazy by nature you know um so like, are we gonna have kids oh what are we getting married for um it wasn't like i was gonna lose any any opportunities by getting married so why didn't i just do it earlier and so yeah i should have just I guess it meant being an adult, and I didn't want to be uh, an adult. Yeah, like mm. Now, when you look at it, do you realize the difference of being married oh, versus yeah. dating? I yeah. like it. It's nice saying my wife. You yeah, know, that's that's yeah. a big difference. Do you guys want to have kids? We still don't know. So that would that would probably say no. Like I was gonna say, if you don't know, don't. That's <laughs> not it, yet. That's what we've decided. Like, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't think there's any rush. I mean, for me personally, I feel like you should definitely know whether you're ready to have it or not, and because yeah. it's a full-on commitment. Yeah, yeah. And I see that people have kids sometimes because they think that's the thing to do, yep. right? And yeah. then all of a sudden they're like, "Oh my God, 
why did I do this? Now I'm stuck. And now yeah. I'm stuck, yeah. and I wasn't ready. And yep. then the one that suffers is the child. Of course, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And for, I always tell people too, if if for somebody, and I know that that her, I'm sure her biological clock, she's like, mm -hmm. but it's ticking. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I remember yeah. my cousin Vinny. <laughs> my biological <laughs> clock is ticking. Um, I love that Marissa Tomei. She does that. It's perfect. But. But I always say there's adoption too. Would yeah. you ever even be open for that? Oh, that's that's something we've talked about. Like, yeah. like if we if we you know drag our feet too long and then decide we want to have kids, I mean, there's something really nice and noble about adopting. You know, it, uh, it, we we get the kid we want and uh, and we get to help out a kid that yeah. Uh, hopefully, it gets adopted by somebody. You know, right. but there's 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 kids that don't and they're bouncing around foster homes and stuff, and I'm sure they'd rather have a steady house with yeah. people that want them there. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So it's not a bad option at all. For you being a father, mm -hmm. because of everything you went through with mm -hmm. your father, mm -hmm. is that something that you get scared? Is that maybe something that, ha that you hesitate? Or would you think because of what you went through, mm. it would make you even a better father? I mean, I... I guess I hadn't. Again, I haven't. I haven't really contemplated. Like, if we, if if my wife was pregnant, I guess the, the reality would sink in, and I'd have to start. Uh, I'd have to think about that. Um, I would imagine it would make me want to be a better father. At the same time, you know, when I was a kid, my my you know my father used to drink like so many fathers did, and so I'm never gonna drink. I had a couple of beers last night. You right, know what I mean. Right. So, 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 who's to say? But I hope that doesn't mean I would turn into some bomb-threatening psychopath either. Right. Because, but I think uh, there's balance in everything. I think so too. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I mean, you got to be straight edge. No. To be a good father. To be a good father. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, but I would, I would, I would hope that uh, I wouldn't. Yeah. I, I, I would hope that would motivate me to just really enjoy being a father and do it right and have patience most importantly yeah seeing you as the transformation mm. that i have seen i could totally me on the outside looking in mm. i feel like you would be an amazing father oh thank you i really you. do thank you. i really do i'm an okay uncle yeah, yeah. oh that's great <laughs> yeah. your sister or your brother my brother your he's brother got, he's got three yeah. three yeah. wow and he's six years younger oh wow and yeah he got busy quick yeah, yeah. yeah. and your sister zero just like me she's yeah. one year younger no kids no. And neither one. Do they? Are they excited about your wrestling career? Do they get so. it? Yeah, they 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 both went. Uh, we were in Seattle two weeks ago, and they came up to the show along with my mom and, and my stepfather. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. And one of my my oldest nephews. He's, this is how good of an uncle I am. I'm gonna say nine. I don't know. I'm so <laughs> bad. Uh, it came. Had a good time. You know. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. So, in one word, what does this return mean for you? Uh, hope. Mm. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Ta -da. What's the what's the the end goal for you then? Oh, Hall of Fame. Hall that's of Fame. It, the Hall of Fame. Yeah, yes. it, it, that's obviously it's setting the bar really high, and I'm gonna have to accomplish a lot. Shoot because, for the moon, man. Yeah, there's a lot of great wrestlers that aren't in the Hall of Fame. I mean, really, really great wrestlers. So, uh, how do I, you know, like saying that I deserve it more than this, 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 this person? That's crazy to think. But I've got to. I've got to shoot for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. I wish you the best. Thank you so I much. I can totally see that one day. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I want to be in the audience. Yeah, in the oh, for sure. yeah. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you so much for, you so much for, for sharing this story. Uh, yeah. Your stories have been amazing, and I've gotten yeah. to know you even more, which is uh, great. And I'll never forget. Remember, uh, we'll leave it with this. Um, oh, my God. And I remember the date, but I don't remember the year. Uh -huh. We were in Nottingham, England. Yeah. Yep. And wasn't it Mickey? And Mickey, you and I, uh, and well, there's a whole group. There's a whole group. That we were downstairs. They have actually this restaurant that's attached to the hotel. I don't know if that's good or bad. Yeah. <laughs> but it was good for us because yeah. it was a lot of fun. And I remember we stayed up the entire night. Yeah. And yeah. then we saw the sunrise. Yep. And I remember it was April 12th. Uh -huh. I remember the date for some yeah. reason. Yeah. I don't remember the year. Do you remember yeah. the year? Would it have to be 2008? Oh, was it 2008? Does that sound maybe right? That sounds, that maybe sound that sounds right. Yeah. We were on a European tour. Yeah. And I don't know what it was about that sunrise, but I, I remember going, we will never see the sunrise yeah, again yeah. of this exact yeah, date. Yeah, yeah. And we were just all having so much fun. Yeah. 
and appreciating. Yeah. I don't know the tour, the, the just the camaraderie, yeah. having people, friendships. Um, yeah. We so probably had a few cocktails maybe too. Just yeah, a few. yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> you don't stay up till sunrise morning. otherwise. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember us being like. We weren't no, hammered. Nobody no. was hammered or vomiting no. or anything. <laughs> no. Yeah. None of that. Yeah. It was just one of those fun overseas tours yep. that but we would have. I, I remember you saying exactly that. It right? was great. Exactly. Yeah, you, you took time to appreciate it. It was that beautiful. That morning sunrise. I don't yeah. know. And then just remember the company. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Anyway, but thank you so much for sharing everything that you did with uh, with me today and with all of us. And uh, as always, you guys, I mean, this has just been uh, just a taste of of what is so magical and special about all these superstars that I always have here, whether it's in studio or via Skype or FaceTime or, you know, all backstage, actually. Mm. And I was going to be getting you backstage, but I actually wanted you in the studio. I like it in the studio. I, it yeah, cool? it's nice. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. So thanks again. Thanks so much. All right, guys, that's the uh, another episode for Making Their Way to the Ring. Thank you so much for joining us on YouTube dot com slash after buzz tv and also on itunes make sure that you subscribe and you you know put your comments on everything that uh took uh, took action here to this uh evening all right guys uh for now lillian garcia at lillian garcia and where can we find you on um oh my on... wife runs it all it's oh does she oh yeah, is yeah. She, everybody's supposed to know that yeah <laughs> it doesn't matter. i can't because then i would just i've that's my... okay where can we find you all um right. uh at uh, Mr. Brian Kendrick. There it is. It's the Twitter one. I, I'm sure it's the same as the Instagram. Maybe yeah. There's a dot. Maybe there isn't. All right. A happy hunting. I don't. Yeah. It, it gets used once every two weeks. That's okay. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. As always, peace, love, and much passion. As you learned it here. See ya. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Phil Svitek, Kevin Undergaro, Lillian Garcia, Mark Donica, associate producer James Frank, After Buzz Wrestling News correspondent Christy Olson, and the entire Making Their Way to the Ring staff, we would like to thank you for tuning in. Like us on Facebook, rate and comment on iTunes and YouTube. Follow Lillian on Twitter and Instagram at Lillian Garcia. This has been a presentation of the After Buzz TV Network. Buzz you later.